It's the Life Upfront Engineering Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Waters, covering ideas, people, and products on the cutting edge of product development. As always, join the conversation at lifeupfront.com. Today on the show, a ski patroller, trail guide, CAE industry veteran, and a man with two C's and three L's in his name, Wayne McClelland. Ah. Wayne, welcome to the show. <laughs> Hey, Jeff, great to be with you. Uh, I wonder how many times I've misspelled your name in the past. <laughs> <laughs> you will not be the only one. So, uh, Wayne, you are the founder of Whamware, a training company yeah. uh, mostly devoted to teaching engineering software companies, application engineers, sales guys, how to present highly technical information uh, in compelling yeah. ways. And I actually went through your training. We met in, uh, I believe it was the late yeah. 90s. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm happy to report that a lot of what I learned for the first time ever in your class is still with me today. And, um, you know, I, I often get complimented on my presentation skills. Oh, that's for me. That's gratifying, Jeff. Thanks. Great. So, uh, before we jump too much into Whamware, um, could you tell me a little bit about your background in the CAD CAE world? Yeah. So Jeff, I was, uh, 25 years with Structural Dynamics Research Corporation, the uh, authors of the Ideas Package, which later merged with Unigraphics to become the NX product. And most now. people just know it as SDRC or knew it knew it as yeah. that. Knew it as that. And now, of course, Siemens uh, PLM. So uh, I was there 25 years. Uh, the first half of those, I was uh, doing consulting in the area of uh, vibrations and structural dynamics. And uh, uh, also starting uh, remote offices in California and in Germany. And then the second half of those uh, 25 years, I was uh, vice president of product management and sort of the the front guy for the software product. And over that period of time, I started as sort of a, uh, a novice presenter, I would say awkward presenter. And after doing about 5,000 presentations and demonstrations, I guess I slowly got better. And uh, to be clear, what what uh, specific kinds of things were you presenting then? Yeah, so certainly I was presenting the technology, be it uh, finite elements or structural dynamics or 3D solid modeling or you know all those things that eventually became what sometimes today is called PLM um, or presenting software tools that related to those technologies. Now, did you have a mentor back then that uh, helped you to kind of come up to speed on presenting or did you just sort of inherently know, hey, I'm not doing this right. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, <laughs> but I'm just going to keep trying different things until I get there. Uh, a bit of both. Certainly the uh, learn trial by error and by fire was one part. The, the mentor would, would have been the founder of the company, SDRC. The founder was uh, was Dr. Jason Lemon, and he was... Uh, Super energetic uh, person and presenter. So did, and I'm com I'm sort of reaching back into your history here. So when you think back to those early days of presenting and knowing that you're, you know, not doing it as effectively as you could, um, what were some of the stumbling blocks for you? What did you know you needed to fix? Well, let me just give a brief little story. About a month or two out of college, I was at SDRC and asked to give my first lecture on component mode synthesis. And uh, I didn't sleep the two nights before at all. Super nervous, a very rough and again, awkward presentation. And I guess what I learned first and foremost was get some sleep <laughs> in advance, uh, whatever that takes, meditation, uh, sleep aids, something. But also... Be less concerned about how you're looking and more concerned about how you're coming across topically to your to your audience and audience and how you're bonding with your audience. So really, then it just became repetition, 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 seeking out ways to put myself in that uncomfortable position of giving a presentation or giving a lecture. And so I would credit just raw repetition as uh, probably what brought me to to giving decent presentations. You know, most, most of the technical people that I see coming out of engineering school, um, at, at least certainly when I went through engineering school, they fall into three camps presentation wise. Uh, one, they're just stellar, incredible presenters, uh, who could put a presidential candidate to shame. That category is actually 
just about non-existent. And then uh, the <laughs> other two categories are people who are really, really nervous about getting up and presenting. And I, I would basically say that's due to their nature as uh, often introverted people or the technical people who really give boring presentations and don't care and don't think that there's anything wrong with that and don't naturally um, understand that they, they should be projecting a little more enthusiasm in order for their audience to consume what they're, what they're giving. Yeah, I agree. I actually agree with the three categories. Um, and I, I think part of that is that as engineers, you know, we're somewhat prejudiciously put in a mold of being introverts. And, and again, I think we have a whole spectrum of personalities, just, just like any career path would. So part of the problem, I think, for engineers is, is feeling we have to fit that stereotype. So stepping out of the stereotype, I think, is actually refreshing uh, to us as, as the giver of a presentation, but it's also refreshing to the audience. I mean, they're, they're not expecting excitement, emotion, passion out of engineers. And, and I, I believe when the audience sees that, feels that, then it really works. So what are the advantages um, of going after these skills? I mean, it's going to take work for you know, the last two categories of those people to adopt these skills. Yeah. Um, you can't just decide overnight, I'm going to be a better presenter. I mean, you've really got to work at it just as hard as you worked at learning some of the partial differential equations and how to solve them and you know all of that engineering stuff back in school. Um, so, 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 exactly. so what's yeah. the benefit, you know, why, why put yourself through that? Well, so let's talk about the benefit first, then we'll get into what, what are some of the ingredients of getting there. The benefits of making such an investment is to your point, I mean, it's an investment in your career. It's not just to look a little bit better to your boss or to be a little less awkward in a presentation. It's, it's a career investment. Uh, there probably are several legs on the stool of a successful engineering career. Uh, and one of those is how you come across to uh, people you're delivering your concepts, your approaches, your products to. So it, it is a career investment and it's a career return. And you have focused, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, I may have the wrong impression, but you have focused your consulting work with engineers, application engineers, and salespeople, often engineers turned salespeople that work for. PLM, CAD, or CAE companies. Um, why why yeah. focus just there? Because I think that the problems that those folks have in presentation are ubiquitous with the customers they're selling to as well. Yeah. So when I retired from SDRC about 15 years ago, um, my intention was to provide services to both uh, developers of products, and by that I mean hardware products as well as the software vendors that provide tools to those end user companies. Um, and, and along the line, I have done quite a bit of raw consulting with um, end user companies, and that's primarily on the strategy front and, and how they go about implementing the tools behind PLM. But on the delivery, the presentation skills, if you will, I sort of say this without slander, I, I think of it as being uh, public speaking for geeks. Um, that that indeed has been primarily delivered, in fact, exclusively delivered to software vendors. And that, to be honest, Jeff, is uh, for two reasons. One, my personal contacts were with a lot of the software vendors and their reseller channels. And two, uh, over the last 15 years, I've been ramping into uh, gradually more full-time retirement. You mentioned some of the uh, the pastimes I have. So I'm happy to just work uh, a week here and a week there and uh, the rest of the time get outdoors and have some fun. So um, those would be the reasons. Oh, that, that makes sense. It's a, uh, it's a comfort zone and that's where your contacts are. And uh, you yeah. certainly earned your stripes in that world. Um, most of my listeners probably work for the end users or the end customers of mm -hmm. uh, these software yeah. companies. Um, and again, you know, I, I think you would agree that, Really, it's the same kind of animal when it comes to presentation and the need for better skills there. I, I, totally, I totally agree. I mean, uh, those working with end user companies, designing and developing products, uh, day in and day out, you sell. You sell your concepts, your ideas, your designs to your management, to your end customers, uh, to people in industry. So um, selling isn't a... Uh, 
the word to sell is not a, a four letter infinitive, I guess it is, but uh, the point is, as engineers, we are selling, you know, be, be we with a software vendor or we're with an end user product development company. So as part of that selling, we need to convey our ideas, be they on one-on-one -on -one ver uh, verbal interactions with people or be they to an audience of hundreds of thousands of people. And uh, I think the skills of presenting well, delivering with clarity and enthusiasm pertain uh, throughout the engineering world. Uh, early in my career, I was a real engineer. Um, I worked at, uh, electronic data systems, EDS, and, uh, which actually, I guess was connected to, uh, SDRC at some point in the past, <laughs> small yes. world out there. Um, and I was contracted primarily to general motors and, um, Delphi and Delco Remy, these kind of, uh, tier one suppliers. And, you know, in my function working for those suppliers and OEMs, I never got any kind of training or focus on uh, presentation skills or technical writing. Um, I did improve, but I did it by going through Toastmasters. I think it was one of my yeah. favorite stories because I was that terrified guy that you described at the beginning. You know, when I, I think back to my first project meetings uh, at GM, it'd be about a dozen or so, maybe more people sitting around a conference room table once a week for a team meeting. And, you know, it would go clockwise around the table. Each person had to present on their piece of the Gantt chart. And I couldn't hear anything ahead of me because I was so nervous about the needle <laughs> swinging to me. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, I would sweat and finally, you know, blurt out something that probably made sense. And then, uh, you know, and then I'd stop listening because I was relaxing for the rest of the meeting. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, so Toastmasters helped me to fix that. Uh, we had a little bit of training at EDS specific, uh, you know, to, to uh, presentation skills. But in terms of being a real engineer in industry, um, that was never something that there there was any continuing education on. Um, do you see that happening out there more today or is that still the status quo? Well, first of all, I'm a big fan of Toastmasters and any program where you can work on this critical skill as part of your career development. So um, I do see a bit more at the, at the, now I've graduated with an engineering degree and now I'm in place at a company. I do see a bit more of training in presentation skills and just interaction skills. I, I continue to be, to be disappointed that there aren't, um, undergraduate courses, at least a semester or so in, in these skills. I think they're very important. Um, and, and I think it's a, <laughs> It's sort of an underappreciated leg up in the engineering world. If, if you can make that investment at university or thereafter at Toastmasters or whatever it might be, if you can make that investment in, in being better at presenting, being more comfortable, being more enthusiastic, um, again, I think the payback clearly is there. Well, when learning any new skill, uh, one thing I've always found useful is to shoot low in the beginning. So try to find one very simple thing that you can master quickly and, and get some positive reaction from, uh, before diving in and becoming a master of masters at whatever the thing is. Um, so, right. you, you know, again, keeping in, in your mind, the idea that we're speaking to engineering executives at product development companies, engineering managers and engineers, um, not the software vendors necessarily. What, what is one sort of really good, simple, actionable tip that somebody could try today? Uh, so here's the actionable tip. Uh, not only one simple thing, but one simple word. And that one word is smile. Mm. Uh, simply smiling when you're discussing things with people. Obviously, smiling with sincerity. Uh, smiling to one person, to a dozen people, to 100 people, to 1,000 people. Um, that's something we can do right now and has a big impact. I mean, that smile, of course, has to exude our own feelings of enthusiasm in, in what we're presenting, what we're discussing. But uh, the smile is the most important uh, starting point. That is fantastic. And as a matter of fact, I'd say that just the act of smiling will change lots of things in your tone. Aut autom Absolutely. In your, in your own, in, in the chemistry in your body at that moment. 
Absolutely. Yeah, that's a great tip. Well, let's dive in then a little bit more to as much as the curriculum and your whamware course as, as, as you think is appropriate in this case. You know, what are some other areas or, or things that uh, people can be doing? What are the what, what's the typical uh, roadmap you give your students? Yeah, let me just start with a couple key. Let me say strategic elements of presenting uh, with more authority and more more impact. And I'll sort of segue, Jeff, off your point about Toastmasters. I think Toastmasters does a great job in setting you at ease and sort of polishing the way one delivers. But I think more important than polish is passion. And by that, I mean passion in the concept, passion in the approach, passion in the product, passion in in what we're discussing uh, with our audience. So uh, on the one hand, Having that passion and exuding that passion to the audience, even at the sake of appearing a little less polished, I think is a very positive element of a successful presentation. The flip side of that coin is um, attention to detail. So uh, attention to detail runs the gamut from pre-preparation way up front, understanding what the venue is, the organization of the seats in the venue. Can you impact? that uh, organization of the seats instead of classroom? Can you make it herringbone or, or a U-shaped form? Um, once you get on, on site, uh, temperature in the room, uh, uh, lighting in the room, all of those details, seating arrangements, uh, just attention to lots and lots of details. Connected into that attention to details is just rehearsing. Um, once heard an interview with... Um, a singer that I'm not a big fan of, but I certainly appreciate her talent, and that is Barbara Streisand. And she was once asked, uh, what does she do to get ready for a performance? And she said, when I have a new piece of music, before I deliver that to an audience, I will have rehearsed that more than 85 times with an orchestra. 85 times. So my point to an engineer is, if you've got a presentation tomorrow to uh, 10 of your cohorts, you know, I would be at home standing in front of a mirror delivering that presentation, maybe even rehearsing it with my loved ones dozens of times before I get in front of that audience of a dozen engineers. So rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. So uh, again, I guess the two key sides of the coin. One is passion and being free and comfortable in exuding that passion. And then attention to all the minutia surrounding the logistics of the actual presentation. Yeah. And, you know, some of that, again, is uh, really geared towards, let's say, a vendor who's coming into a customer setting and taking control of the room. Um, and also the, I'd say the pitch that you're giving, if you want to call it a pitch, um, yeah. you know, is something that's definitely going to take that kind of repetition. I remember um, some of the guys that used to work for me and, you know, I, I started doing this after your presentation training, but, uh, I, I would have them do what's called the, the, uh, computerless demo. So they needed to be able mm -hmm. without a computer screen and without a mouse to go through their entire product demonstration and, and uh, product pitch, just, just speaking yep. out in public. And, you know, they would practice walking their dogs going down the street and, uh, at home yes. and, uh, and, you know, at, at some point it just became baked in. Now, my my guess is that I might have some listeners who are pushing back on this advice a little bit because they're thinking, well, all right, I'm giving a 20 minute uh, update for my section of this project uh, at a weekly meeting. I, I can't see myself spending, you know, 20 hours practicing for that. <laughs> maybe not 20 hours, but maybe uh, maybe half an hour or an hour or. Maybe as you lie in bed the, the night before, just as you say, visualize how this is going to play mm -hmm. out. It's the key point. Just, just visualize the material you're going to present and visualize your success in delivering the material. So, you know, again, I don't think it's dozens and dozens of hours, but, uh, you know, just investing an added half hour beyond the development of the material you're presenting. Now I'm talking about just investing a half an hour or an hour the, the day or the night before in your delivery of the material. You know, you've already prepared, you know, either handouts or slides or whatever the mechanism is, but but now just spend a little more time and it might be as simple as five minutes as you fall asleep at night the night before, just visualizing how that's going to play out and, and, and how you're going to enjoy doing it. That's another point is 
you know, try to get past the dread and get to the enjoyment on your own part. And, and that'll play through to the audience. So what about eye contact? You know, this is one of the standard things that you hear presentation guys teaching is, uh, you know, you got to sweep through the room. It's been three seconds on each eyeball or, you know, some rules of thumb <laughs> like that. What, what do you recommend? Yeah, I'm big on eye contact, eye contact also, but not so much in a metric as just, you know, spreading the eye contact, making sure you're covering the dozen or hundred or more people that are in the audience. But also, as you're, as you're scanning that audience, you know, find one or two people who are giving you good body language feedback. I mean, some, some people will be nodding. You know, they may agree with you. They may think you're doing a great job. They may just be faking you out just for grins. Whatever it is, that positive body feedback is something you can feed on and take benefit from. So, yes, yeah, making sure you're scanning the audience, have good, solid contact with decision makers. Uh, in your organization or in your customer's organization, uh, but also just feeding off some people that are giving you good uh, body language feedback. Now, you're the first and only person I've ever seen give a presentation uh, where at the beginning of the presentation, you start by plugging speakers into your computer and there's sound effects during the presentation. Do you still espouse that? Is that something you're still into? Well, I don't know if it works for everybody. I, I'm. Uh, it depends on your style. I'm sort of a uh, erratic, spontaneous, <laughs> uh, manic presenter. So the the crazier crazy seems to work for me, and loud and uh, yeah. So I, I start off my presentations typically with some little music or getting people up dancing, walking through the audience, having a little bit of fun. So sort of. The, uh, I guess a hidden agenda there is for my own management of adrenaline. I, I sort of try to take that nervous adrenaline and convert it into uh, outbound energy to the audience. So I can see that that may not work in certain environments or with certain people, certainly in sort of a stiff engineering meeting uh, kind of environment. It could in some companies, but you know, in most, I'd say the traditional, uh, that wouldn't be welcome. But one thing that... Um, I think we can both agree on is, uh, you know, when you look at the content and the layout, the visual appeal of slides in PowerPoint presentations, backing your talk, uh, they're, they're pretty unanimously horrible. I mean, I just, I, I, I haven't seen a good engineering presentation in so long that I'm starting to believe they don't exist. Well, first, let me, let me, let me segue off your point there. You said the right thing is that those slides should be backing your talk. They shouldn't be mm. your talk. I mean, some engineers, the slides are the talk and, you know, we're just sort of up there clicking through the slides. So the key is they're just supplemental to what you're saying and what you're delivering. So first of all, they should be fewer than we probably expect they should be. Secondly, also to your point, they, they need to be visually simple and clear and five bullet points or less, and they shouldn't be sentences. Each, each bullet point should be three or four or five words. So there are some some graphic discipline items we can all adhere to to make those backing slides uh, effective and supportive rather than just distracting. Yeah, I, I, I'm so hypersensitive to it now. Uh, you know, having just a few bullet points, if you're going to even have bullets. Um, you know, I've heard people, some presentation gurus say bullets are for guns. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, a lot, lot less text. I, I mean, in order of magnitude, less text possibly than what most people are used to today yep. is what you should have. And, you know, I think that's an area where people need to really, really pay attention. And, you know, you have, uh, let's say 12 lines of bullets on one slide and those bullets actually break the line. So there's a carriage return. And I mean, you've got a sea of text that you're looking at and, I think that causes a ton of cognitive dis dissonance, one of my favorite terms. Um, I mean, you, you, okay, so if, if it's supposed to be backing you as the speaker, you've got a pretty heavy portion of your audience's brain focused on trying to interpret those you know, angled letters on the screen, while another portion of the brain is trying to also interpret what you're saying verbally. Well, and, and, and it distracts the focus to the screen and off you and you're the performer. The screen is just a backdrop. I mean, I mean, it's it's so important for us to keep the focus on 
on us as presenters and and on the points and the topics we're trying to make. And the the graphics behind us are just there for help. Um, I'll, I'll, if I could connect back to a previous point, Jeff, and that is, if I'm an engineer uh, delivering a technical topic, um, maybe a venue where a bit more energy and if I could connect back into the to the to the point of you know music or other audiovisual aids or more energy, um, I picture here an engineer delivering a technical topic to a boring uh, technical conference with a hundred people in the audience who've been sitting there for three days talking about uh, isoparametric finite elements or whatever the <laughs> whatever the topic might be. Uh, wouldn't I love to have an engineer get up there with a good message, but also with some liveliness and some entertainment value? So I I don't I don't think we can. It's possible to overdo it. I think there is a clear role for entertainment in engineering presentations, even for the driest topics. I I would work really hard to get some entertainment value uh, into presenting to an audience like that at some user conference where. You know, we're talking about deep technical topics or design concepts. Uh, just putting some entertainment value in it just will make the presentation more effective and more memorable. Oh, absolutely! And uh, if I if we're if we're on the same page, I'm betting you don't mean try to be funny. No, I'm I'm very careful. I I'm horrible at humor, so if if I'm funny, it's only accidental. <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, no, I think just energy, portrayal of energy, and and however that works into your personality. Uh, just don't be a, don't feel like because you're an engineer delivering a rather dry topic, that it has to be portrayed as dry. I mean, let let your own interest in the topic show. Um, have some fun with the audience. Uh, make sure you keep the the key points succinct to the audience, but memorable. And, and just enjoy it. If you enjoy it, the, the audience will certainly enjoy it. All right. Well, if uh, one of my listeners doesn't have access to one of your classes, um, what books or other resources we talked about, uh, Toastmasters, for example, um, what would you yeah. recommend for people to do some self-study on? Well, there's a lot to do. Um, the first thing I would do is recommend a book written um, about 70 years ago. Um I think you've heard me mention this, Jeff, but if uh, in, in this book is going to sound very manipulative and very salesman, salesperson oriented. But believe me, this is a book all about how do I how do I interact with people and how do I do that in a sincere way? So the book is called How to Win Friends and Influence People by Mr. Dale Carnegie, written again 60, 70 years ago. Oh, it's maybe 150 pages with rather large types. So, uh, you know, invest invest an hour in reading the book. Uh, again, it may sound manipulative and very much sort of vacuum cleaner salesman like, but uh, it has things in it like uh, become genuinely interested in other people. Remember that a person's name is to that person the sweetest and most important sound in any language. Talk in terms of the other person's interests. Just just page after page of common sense. Um, how can I sincerely show my interest in the person I'm having a discussion with? And a great book. Read it, read it. Uh, take a Toastmasters course. Volunteer anytime you can to give up and give, give a presentation. You know, it, it's sort of, I just went through pilot training and it, pilot training is all about accumulating hours and thereby accumulating experience. Likewise with presentations, go out of your way to find a reason to give a presentation. Uh, that'll be stressful and that's good. That's sort of flexing the cerebral matter to uh, to hone a skill that, that again, is, is career important. And, and as you mentioned earlier, Jeff, a very small fraction of people and probably even a smaller fraction of engineers are born with an innately uh, effective skill at, at presenting uh, to an audience. Uh, but for the vast majority of us, um, this is a skill that can be developed. It's a skill sort of like uh, free throw shooting in basketball, where you know you just keep shooting hundreds and hundreds of free throws a day, and eventually you're going to become very good. 
And that's the same thing with presenting. If we can find an excuse once a week to present to half a dozen people or a couple hundred people, whatever it might be, uh, we will indeed develop a skill that that is of career importance. Yeah, I, I think that's a critical piece there. Um, you know, as I said, when I first got started, I was terrified every time. And just to talking in front of 12 people, I was terrified. And um, Same here. I, I would say, uh, you know, somehow I inexplicably landed in this world of sales and engineering software, and that's been most of my career. So I've had more practice than most people <laughs> will ever get to. And I am it's very rare that I even get butterflies in the tummy when I give a presentation, even to a large group of people. Actually, in some cases, I'd say a large group of people is uh, less intimidating than a small group. Yeah, in some ways. Actually, you're lucky. I still get butterflies. <laughs> <laughs> to, to me, that's not a bad sign. Though. To me, that's a good sign that that I care about You know what's going to transpire here, that, that it's important to me, and that the adrenaline's flowing, and now I just got to turn that adrenaline into positive energy. Great. Well, uh, Wayne, I think we'll wrap here, but um, where can people find you online? If they are you blogging, do you have a website? Where where can they learn more about you? Yeah, probably the best thing to do is go to facebook.com slash demo skills. Um, and there's quite a bit of information there. Also, website demo dash skills uh, dot com with quite a bit of information on on that. And again, I just encourage you know, every single engineer out there, engineering manager, executive, just to to recognize the importance of presentation skills as a as a career asset and continually uh, work to develop and hone those skills. Fantastic. Thanks again, Wayne. Jeff, I very much enjoyed it. Thank you very much. That's all for this episode. Thanks for listening to the Life Upfront Engineering Podcast. Visit lifeupfront.com to comment and connect with me on Twitter, Google Plus, and LinkedIn. Also, you can really help the show by leaving a review on iTunes. Thanks again. Until next time.